I uh, only use, I try to use the, just the basic colors of white and black, and then brought in the reds and grays to help reinforce shapes. This helped me focus on solely just the size, shape, position, and linear aspects, and I didn't have to be tied down or bothered with the color. And it can play some more song cues if it doesn't have the color messing with it. Bigger the lines and the shapes can pop stronger without it. I want to be distracted. I use organic geometric for most of the contrast. The organic forms are made from figures, which I just construct and then have geometric forms lined around it, kind of like architecture, surrounding the figure. I use different systems of concave, convex lines to try to get the negative and the figure to be locked together on the same plane so that there's no perception of space in here. I want them completely flat as possible. When I make it, basically the horizon line, which in the paper is called the buffer bar, it brings everything up a little further, gets off the bottom from sinking down and bringing the eye down. I want the left part to be completely level with both sides. It isn't like this is the front like a stage. And that most of the form will actually just emerge straight out of it. So it's just all these are basically just wires connected to it. So instead of being a chair on a stage, it's just this flat two-dimensional line shape coming out of the bottom. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, for this painting, I went through just a couple of different variations. I was originally planning to have a few figures in here. And I realized that the more figures are crowding it, it needed just to have one single one to react to the law of geometry that I try to play some curves to have a step from this to this because it's a little harsh. So I wanted curve shapes to step from the organic to curved to flat. I had a larger dark one, but it was too close to the edge and it didn't let any compression work on the painting because it was just being sucked to the side. So I, I tried to push it over and Make it a little smaller so I got more weight, more white, and more compression, squeezing all the inner elements together. Mm -hmm. Later on, I actually put another figure right here as a mirror effect to repeat this one. And it worked well for this half of the composition, but it was still split because it wasn't leaning over the other side. So I mimicked the oval shape over there, put an oval here, and then just had to work with getting it salt as possible so it wouldn't overpower or compete too much with the figure and the other shapes. So just let kind of go along. The fuzz patch at the bottom corner helps relate the soft ghost line and with the harsher line because it's still a line in a shape. Or is it that is in its own world, but it's just enough. It's a small enough amount where it doesn't bother the viewer looking at it. Um, I'm trying to pop out a lot of negative shapes, like in here I'll cut out these geometric forms, these squares and rectangles. I use as many repeats as a uh, format of secondary shapes as possible. There's, it's about a 5 by 7, so you split it here, then it'll be the same format going up, and then I'll split it again, and this square is cut on, I believe, okay, I think I did this. You got the ratio of the format, cut it here so this is to this as this side is to here in the bottom, across and to the center to make the square. And then if I cut the square at the same at the top, and then the square break, all the, basically I'm saying all the shapes are carved out, they're not so arbitrary, mm -hmm. fixed in here. And the plumb line, I was really interested in, enjoyed, helps pop out these, the plumb line plays right next to the curves. It makes them stand out a little more and then get these little shapes to pop in. And I have like points, which relates to this, mm -hmm. relates to this a little, and this actually relates to the figure. So everything's playing around together. There's ghost images of the underpainting here, which I left. So have a little difference in some of the different areas of white shapes. I 
for a while, I thought about using different variations of white, spring out oil paints and having beiges. But I thought I'd stay with the purity of just the single white and single black, and just let slight transparency show a little difference. Drawings were a nice surprise for the semester myself. I started with the plans to have about 80, 75 80 percent paintings and then 25% drawings for the show. And the drawings, I had good bit of success with them and just kept working with them. And I decided to make it kind of the dominating part of the show. All those paintings are so large and big, they thought me go out. I started the drawings using making linear figures, which is outline, contour, and gestural. And after a while of uh, processing, I got angry, messed some couple up, got dark, turned into a dark patch. And the dark patch had a lot more possibilities and power than the lines did. So I just continued with that for the rest of the semester. Um, this is one of the first dark patch ones, I'll just talk about it. I was going to make the contrast. I was trying to have a sharp geometric rectangle with a fuzzy kind of explosion of black inside the center, but rather than that was being swallowed into the white with, with the, um, the white, I can't think of what it's called them earlier, slashes and just marks coming in to engulf the black and lock it into the same plane as the rectangle. That way it wouldn't be just an object sticking out in front. Then the fuzz is emphasized by the sharp cut in the center, it sharpen up the edges a little, and the legs are sharper than the outside. That will make this look fuzzier and this look a little cleaner. And this cleaning down helps modulate it into the bottom bars, so they all relate together. I think if the legs were really fuzzy, the bar would just look awkward and wouldn't match. I have a small gym shape here to also help react with chaoticness and the fuzz, and I repeat it on the same diagonal, smaller, to tighten the rest of the composition. A couple small points in there to make fuzzy shape, patch the shape. Mm. Basically all the drawings have a buffer bar and a rectangle, but each one is very particular in how those shapes are made. The bars might be slightly different according to the geometry of how wide the rectangle is, the shape of the figure. It's all constructed pretty thoroughly. The more and more of the figure drawings I did, almost uh, less amount of figure was actually in them. I, I mean, I basically I found out all you really need is maybe a single dot for the eye and a navel and a curvy shape at the bottom which can create as a figure. This one doesn't even have any real figureness in it. It just has stalks on the shape of a dot and it still reads its figure with the others in here. This one, I was trying to make a really predominant negative shape right here. And it's real strong because the curve right here will help mimic this curve. And they kind of play together. Yeah, this pops and then they alternate from the white leg that identifies the, the ground and then a dark leg. So get a nice little push-pull. The black flows from the bottom bar into your, and it starts off solid, then modulates up and fans out, which will help tie this black patch in. So now that black patch and this dot have something to relate to. It all relates and comes back down there and holds it together. It's, and this one, I got the rectangle from taking the square break. And it actually takes a while to explain. If you look close, you can see all the drafting lines in there to figure out exactly how the thickness of this relates to the width of this. What discoveries did you make that wow. you would like to talk about and that you did not anticipate when um, starting the project? I didn't anticipate the drawings going to a darker world. Mm -hmm. I usually stuck with contour, most things I did. And traditionally, when I did all black and white paintings, I like them to be mostly black and a little white. And I discovered that having a really white open ground was really interesting, how popping shapes. So that was unexpected, the darkness of all these. I think the one that's on the, the smallest one of the three paintings was about the perfect size for me. I'm trying to, 
Like I like larger drawings and paintings because you have freedom of movement and you can draw from your shoulder and your hip more than you can on a little piece of paper. But when it's too big, then you can't make one movement across the entire plane. Uh, you have, what kind of influence does the Russian construct us? Yeah. That's, that's putting all over the DC. Yeah, I've had Russian influence over me, print on me a lot. And not just in art, it's weird. Um, the Russian constructivist and the simplicity of the forms when they make a work of art, uh, Elevich, thir I think it's 13 red squares, I think it was. I always found those real interesting. I like making compositions, trying to get as pure as possible with just a few simple forms. The long thin painting, when I was working on it, I started thinking the most interesting parts of it were the red door, the black bottom, and the line where I made some of the first few cuts. And that the painting itself was kind of demanding to be a purest version of that painting. and didn't need the figures and the lines and actually made a second painting off of it. Stretched the canvas to try to see how it would look. And I was very happy with it. But for the sake of having a sustained show and series, I wanted everything to be similar. So I just reworked it in a new way to get the figure in. And I've taken Russian classes at school, and I kind of wish I did it a long time ago. So I, Russian language. Russian language. When I was in high school, a Russian student lived with me for an right? exchange student. He got sent back to Russia, bringing him back to school. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I went to overseas to Afghanistan. It was a Russian-speaking country, and I ran into a lot of people. I ran into a few Russians and Afghans that spoke it. And I wish I had learned it beforehand. Became friends with an Uzbek and exchange for years and I came here and started taking Russian language and all my artwork it tends to lean towards Russian art so I might pursue it further on.